Yeah, he died a few years ago, but yeah, that's... Jeez. Guys, word from permanents when they're in the war room, no... No banter. Just, yeah, emphasis on not even not laughter. I don't know what that is, but... <laughs> Oh. I read about it <laughs> Will we know when they're talking in the war room? We should be able to hear them. We'll hear them and we should, we'll see them there too. If they're yeah, but oh, it's delayed. delayed. Yeah, it, there is a delay. Uh, it's like 20 seconds oh. or something. Maybe not that it's much. It's not that much, but it's a But delay. it is a delay. You, you almost don't want to watch it because yeah. you'll go, hey, I was just patting my head and now I'm patting my head. It's like the person when they put the camera on them, they're going. Yeah. <laughs> Frank, you need a, you need like a little a chapeau with that, a fez. like maybe a, a beret. A fez hat. Oh right. I'll try not to. Thanks. Yeah. No. Thanks for the the warning. I'll no. try not to. I will be reliant upon you. Got to make sure I don't lean into Peter's shot. I just uh, I I can't resist watching when it's on the the Directv Young Frankenstein. My, my God, it was so freaking Marty Feldman, that guy was... You know, I can help you with that hump. What hump? <laughs> and he just walks away like... And you know why the horses... And then the hump changes. <laughs> well, that's what he's, you know why the horses act up whenever they talk about Frau Blucher, don't you? Why? Blucher is German for glue. Oh, that's right. You, I remember you saying that before. The judge is pretty tough on that. The scene with Gene Hackman. Oh, oh my God. I was going to make cappuccino. I know. Can we no, it's That's the best scene of the, the, the movie, I still think. Agree. Oh, do you want some soup? <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you know uh, 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 Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> Lighting the creature's thumb. That, that's good. My favorite scene, it, though, is where they show the creature and they do putting on the ritz. <laughs> and it is not really a um, Mel Brooks film. It's a Gene Wilder film. Gene wrote most of it, took it to Brooks, and wanted Brooks' company to produce it. And when he read this, the, the treatment, Brooks said, "Can I direct it?" But pretty close to because Brooks mind. produced um, uh, the Elephant Man. His company produced the Elephant Man. Mm. Really? Yeah. Directed by um, David Lynch. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He started a production company, and uh, so it really is a Gene Wilder film with a lot of Mel Brooks influence. But it's not a Mel Brooks film, and that's because I, I say Mel Brooks was the second Orson Welles. His best movie was the best movie he ever did. The producers. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't. And he did other good films after that. Okay, Let's here we go. Bullets. Here we go. You're just seconds away from an After Hours exclusive. The Automotive Auto Line After Hours Automotive Draft, coming right up. Auto Line After Hours is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Chevrolet, the all new Chevrolet Cruze. Get used to more. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. Welcome to the first annual AutoLine After Hours Automotive Draft with team owners John McElroy from AutoLine and Dymaxion Motors. Peter DiLorenzo, the ever-lovable auto extremist representing, what else, Renzo Motors. Jim Hall of 2953 Analytics is our third owner, hailing from Automobiles Bistango, SA, while Ed Lapham from Automotive News represents the Duard Auto Group. Meanwhile, over in what we're calling the War Room is our top-notch team of draft analysts, Mark Phelan from the Detroit Free Press and Scott Burgess of the Detroit News. And I'm your AutoLine After Hours announcer, Frank Marcus from MotorTrend. Now, before I toss it to our analysts for a draft preview, a quick reminder to all our contest participants. And at this point, if you're asking what contest, I'm sorry to tell you it's too late to enter. But for those of you who went to our Facebook page or Twitter and gave us your five top draft picks hoping to match one of our owners, then it's time to watch closely and take notes. 
Because before you can collect any of these great prize packages from our friends at Chevy and Hyundai, you have to tell us how many picks you matched to which owner through Facebook or Twitter. For info on the rules, just visit bit.ly slash contest. Now, let's hear from two guys who aren't eligible for the contest. Joining us for the first time this evening in the war room for a look at our teams, the owners, and what we may expect this evening are Mark and Scott. Guys? Thanks, Frank. I'm Mark Phelan with the Detroit Free Press. This is my lovely assistant, Scott Burgess of the Detroit News. And behind me, we have the whiteboard where we'll be tracking the progress of the four companies throughout the night. We'll be writing down every draft pick, and the order the companies are drafting in was determined a few weeks ago here on Auto Line. Peter Marks of Bar Bosch North America pulled the names out of a hat. They will be voting in the order you see here in the first round. They reverse in the second round, as frequently happens in F NFL fantasy drafts, and then they reverse again. <coughs> what are you looking for tonight, Scott? Well, first I was looking for a waitress, because a lot of the drafts that I've been involved with have been at bars. But since we don't have that, um, I'm looking to see what kind of executives each of the uh, these analysts are, are, are looking for. When you're building a company, what's most important? Is it the design of the product? Is it a, is it a charismatic leader at, at, as the head of your thing? I'm also wondering how long it'll be before one of these uh, people pick themselves. Um, and there's always a chance that John may pick Jim, uh, just to throw things off a little bit. Well, and you know the old saying, a lawyer def who defends himself has a fool for a client. <laughs> We're going to be watching throughout the evening to see who gets picked by all, of our com by all the companies. Back to you, Frank. Just before we dive into everything, let me run down the few rules we have here. The biggest one is who is draft eligible? And the answer to that is any current living auto, global auto executive may be drafted. So just to be clear, you can't pick anyone deceased or retired, not even Bob Lutz. We're keeping this in the here and now. Oh, and by the way, after he makes his pick, each owner will have up to one minute to tell us uh, some background on why he chose that particular exec. Okay, that does it. Uh, let's head to the studio for the first choice in the 2011 Autoline After Hours draft. And that choice is being made by John McElroy, Supreme Commander of Dymaxion Motors. John? And for all those who don't know, Dymaxion Motors is named after a car that Buckminster Fuller came out with in the 1930s. Design philosophy. The line, design philosophy. The, I b still believe the rest of the industry has not caught up to this design that he came out with in the 1930s. And it's sort of this teardrop shape. And that leads me to my first choice. I believe automotive design is the most important thing for any car or company. So I'm starting out with a designer. There's a whole bunch of good people out there. I wasn't sure exactly who, who to go with, but I decided to go with the master, the guy who was named as the automotive designer of the 20th century. And that, of course, is Giorgetto Giugiaro. And uh, it's very appropriate for me to get them because if you look at the Dymaxion car, it's a teardrop shape. It's really a one box design. And when I got a chance to meet Giugiaro a number of years ago, I said, oh, I, you know, I was fawning over him. I said, oh, Giorgetto, you know, you were so prescient. You were so visionary. 20 years ago, you predicted that the industry would more and more and more go to one box designs. And he said, no, you're wrong. I said that 30 years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, he's my man. He's my first pick, Giugiaro, because design counts more than anything else in this business. Good choice. The guy's done everything from cameras to pasta. He actually designed a pasta, the extruding machine, so it's a certain shape of pasta that, that actually mimics weather, our window weather stripping. It's very strange. And uh, With the second choice in our 2011 Autoline After Hours draft, here is Peter DiLorenzo, De Il Commendatore <laughs> of Renzo Motors. <laughs> yes, uh, a few details about Renzo Motors. Uh, I'm running it. There will be no other person running the show, so you don't have to worry about me picking a CEO because I'm it. The headquarters of Renzo Motors is in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Um, we are going to introduce our first car. I'm, I'm not as far advanced as Jim is, but the, uh, the next Paris Auto Show, which is in 2013, I believe. 2011. No, no, 2012. 2012. 2012. 2012. Yes, 2012. Yeah. Paris is even years. Right. So I, I share John's. Um, to me, the ultimate initial uh, product differentiator in this business is design, and as we go forward, it's going to be even more important. 
And I know a lot of great designers, and there are a lot of great designers out there, and I don't mean to slight anyone, but my first choice is Mr. Freeman Thomas, uh, the visionary uh, guy who plays on the edges uh, when he does concepts, and I think he's, I've spent a lot of time with Freeman, and I, I would trust him with the first Renzo, which is also uh, the first model is going to be called the Bandini. So that's my pick. With the third choice in the 2011 Autoline After Hours Automotive Draft, the sensei of Duard Motor Group, Edward Lapham. For its first pick in the 2011 draft, <laughs> the Duard Auto Group selects John Krafcheck, CEO of Hyundai Motor America. We be believe that Mr. Krafcheck has the right demeanor and sense of leadership for our boardroom and also to guide those on the shop floor. We believe that our company's slogan, which is sustainable transportation for every man, will be the way that the industry must go in the future and that Mr. Krafcheck has proven that he understands it and can lead our company. And with the final choice in the first round of the Autoline After Hours Automotive Draft uh, the, is the major domo for life of Automobiles Bistango SA, Mr. Jim Hall. I'm going to hold design off, um, but the, the first one, see I would like to be the chairman of my own business and let the CEO handle that business stuff and I can do chairman-like things like scream at the guys at Wall Street. And for that I want somebody who understands multiple brands and also understands the importance of design and engineering together. Martin Vinterkorn, head of the Volkswagen Group. Uh, they've, he, under Vinterkorn, Volkswagen has done a great job of managing some very disparate and very similar brands but keeping them different. Nine brands. Nine brands. And you know what? That's magic. That's the kind of guy I really would like to have uh, at, at, in the CEO's job. I really would. So I'm being serious here. This is horrible. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> it's uncomfortable, too. It's like itching. <laughs> okay, let's go to the war room for some reaction to round one. Wow. What a first round. It really kind of caught us off guard that three out of the four were not in any of our top picks. But it's not surprising, and it really shows you the direction that each of these guys want to go. Well, and, and we've got two designers coming off the board early, which does show that, that design is becoming ever more important as brands look to, to differentiate themselves to establish identities. There's plenty of good designers left, though. And, and it's very interesting to see that John Krafcik, who is one of the people who has proven he can take a brand that was nothing, as Hyundai was, in terms of engineering, design, image and, and really elevate it. It's very interesting to see that uh, he was DeWard's first pick. And, and Vinterkorn, I think the jury is still out as to whether he's really managed all those brands that well myself. I mean, there, there seems to be some overlap and, and Seat has never been a particularly strong brand. I'm not, I'm not completely sold on Vinterkorn as a first round pick. Well, and one of the things that you might have to be concerned with with the designers is great design costs a lot of money. Um, and is it always a realistic design? You may have the most fantastic vi looking vehicle in the world, but if it costs a million dollars, how many are you gonna really sell? Do you need somebody like uh, Wintercorn who can turn around and manage all of those different things? Um, then again, you can have somebody like uh, Kraftcheck who's very charismatic and, and really knows how to handle a lot of different things at the same time. And you have to remember, he's only the CEO of North America, not of all of Hyundai. Um, and so he also has to manage up. Yeah, r running a big company would be a, a, the, the uncharted territory uh, for Kraftchik at, at this point. And it's going to be very interesting to, to see now. We, we've got a product emphasis in, on the parts of, of two of our companies. We've got management on the <coughs> other. It's going to be interesting to see where they go from here. Back to you, Frank. An interesting round one. Let's see who's chosen in round two. With gas prices where they are these days, if you're after fuel efficiency, you need to check out the Hyundai Sonata. There's three different models to choose from. The 2.4 liter GDI, which delivers a segment leading 35 miles per gallon. Then there's the two liter turbo, which offers 274 horsepower, yet delivers 33 miles per gallon. And the brand new hybrid that provides a combined 37 miles per gallon. And you can learn a lot more about each one at HyundaiSonata.com. 
After a somewhat controversial round one, let's see who's chosen in round number two. This time, we're starting out with Bistango Domo, Jim Hall. Oh boy, which one to pick? Um, chief engineer for the company. Uh oh, Responsible for all the product engineering. Jim Federico from General Motors. Jim uh, basically took what was a mess with a non-global platform that was supposed to be global and made it global and made some darn good vehicles off those platforms. Now they've put them on the small car and the first fruits of that are starting to appear. One of which uh, you guys will probably drive later on that is very impressive because the chassis is dialed in, it's smooth, it's quiet, it's affordable and it's fun to drive. Um, so Federico, definitely, he's uh, the, the chief engineer for the company and I basically, with him, you'd have powertrain guys on him, but he's basically the guy I would want engineering my products right now. Going with the theory that when, when you're in a draft, there are times when you want to also take the best available athlete or the best athlete available. For our second choice, Duard is going to pick Mary Barra, head of global product development for General Motors. Mary's an engineer. Uh, she's just stepped into that product development role. General Motors has moved her in from, from manufacturing, moved her into the HR responsibility where she's got a sense for the management and the restructuring of that company. And she's just the kind of teammate that we need at DeWard. Interesting, two GM choices. And since I'm going to be pounding around Road America most of the days instead of being in the office, I, you know, I need someone um, who I can trust to run Renzo Motors. And uh, I'm, my thoughts are with a gentleman who is uh, highly talked about right now in the business, and that's Mr. Mark Fields, who's going to be the COO of Renzo Motors. And I trust Mark implicitly to make sure that even if I had too many margaritas, the cars will come together nicely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I better grab them while I can get them because you guys are starting to make some pretty good picks here. So uh, first comes design in my book. That's the most important thing that makes people want to buy the cars, but then you've got to de develop the product. So I'm going with Derek Cusack. I think he's one of the best product development people in the business. He's got international experience. Dymaxion is going to dominate the world once this car comes out. And I need a guy like Derek Cusack to be able to bring in all kinds of ideas and know all the different regulations from around the world. He is going to develop the first Dymaxion car. So you're comfortable with rear wheel steering then instead of front wheel steering? Yes. I Whoa! Am. Yes. <laughs> but I'm not going to do it like Bucky Fuller, which if you wanted to turn left, you, turn, you turned you it. wheel right. right. Yeah. yeah, because he was you crazy in that regard. No, sailor. Uh, yes, and that's how he got it. Because yeah. with a tiller, you go opposite the way you want to steer. Yeah. Pretty scary, though. Off to our draft analysts for a look at round two. Right, it's getting interesting now. We got, we got some product people coming off the board. It's very interesting to see that Bistango and Award both voted for GM engineering talent. This is a real endorsement of how people think GM's recent products have been and what's expected of the next generation. And the, the choice of Mary Barra is quite interesting. A lot of people were surprised when she got the top product development job at GM a few months ago. But, but you know, th this is uh, clearly an indication that uh, she's gaining some following outside the company as well. Well, what do you think, Scott? Well, I, I love the Federico pick. I, I think that that's a really smart pick, and uh, you couldn't have a more energetic person to, to head your product development. <clears throat> I, I, I think it's very interesting uh, that both Derek Kuzak and Mark Fields were picked before Alan Mulally. Um, maybe it's a little too general of a position as CEO, where uh, a lot of these people think that they'll be the CEO, and they want the right team underneath them. Dirk Kuzak, had, was, uh, when he was ahead of Ford Europe product, has been bringing over all of those vehicles to America. And uh, that one Ford, one strategy is really, I think the, the heart of that is Dirk Kuzak and his leadership. So I think that he's a really good pick. Uh, Mark Fields is another one that um, you can't deny that when you're in charge of North America and North America is doing fantastic, you get to get some of the credit. Um, and and uh, he's also worked at Mazda, and he's also you know so he has a, 
a very well-rounded thing, and I think that everybody would be really happy to have those people in those positions. You're, you're right about the, both the four choices are interesting, and, and in particular the, the, the fact that uh, Mullally's still on the board. Because if you think about it, you know, Peter DiLorenzo, he, he was looking for somebody to run the company while he'd be kind of an absentee manager sitting you know, up on the top floor. That's very much what Bill Ford was doing when he picked Alan Mullally, <laughs> but we've still got uh, Alan waiting, and I think you're right. I, Derek Kuzak, you can't give him enough credit for what's gone on in the technology and the quality of Ford's products. And I, I'm not sure exactly how flattered Peter would be when compared to Bill F Ford in leadership role. Um, one of the things that I, I think is interesting is that uh, some of the, the big stars, Marchioni is still available, Gone is still available. Uh, these are these are not lightweights that are going to be going in the third round. Well, and we've got uh, two companies that don't have a designer yet, and, and you know, another company that's still looking for the, the engineer to set the product direction. So, I mean, th there, there's a lot more you know, to see, and we've you know, got you know, six more rounds to go through. Well, back to you, Frank. This is getting interesting. Gentlemen, give us your round three picks. <laughs> okay, where should I go next? Uh, I've got the design of the car done. I've got the product development guy. Now I think I've got to go to powertrain. And Dymaxion Motors is going to be known for being innovative and different. And we're going to start out with a new type of engine that's going to entail very low investment cost. And that brings me to the Eco Motors OPAC, opposed piston, opposed cylinder engine. So the head of powertrain for me is going to be Peter Hofbauer, who, as you guys know, used to be in Volkswagen engine development. He knows gas engines. He knows diesel engines, he knows engines. And uh, not only that, but we had him on Auto Line After Hours earlier, and we were all really impressed with what he did. So for powertrain, I'm going with Peter Hofbauer. OK. Um, being a, a leader of an esoteric car company, you know, <laughs> has its rewards. You know, when I'm, when I'm visiting my uh, my palazzo on, on the Isle of Capri, you know, I really need to have someone in the trenches that I can call on my cell phone or they can text me at all hours of the night and say, you know, the factory is in fire or something. But, <laughs> and, uh, but I need someone who is very familiar with the product, has a, a varied background, who could work closely with Mark Fields to make sure that uh, I don't make a fool of myself at, at the Paris Auto Show, so I'm going to go with Mr. Mark Royce to be my uh, product leader uh, at r and Motors and uh, r and Motors, so uh, I'm very confident in uh, my team so far. And as Peter says, he's picking Mark Royce. The rest of us are scratching Mark Royce off our list because we all had him on there, too. Well, yeah. I, I had Derek Kuzak <laughs> on my product development thing, so, you know. <laughs> Ed, I think you're Ed, next. I, I think I'm going to go with a, with a powertrain superstar as well. I'm going to pick Klaus Dreiger, who's the board member at BMW for R&D and was the moving force behind, <laughs> behind their um, efficient dynamics powertrain. He, he can go both ways, and I mean that in the very best way. He can do it with the traditional reciprocating piston engines as well as with the new power plants and the, uh, the electrification where BMW is moving. Good choice. Now we're, we're to you, Mr. Major Domo. No powertrain selection now because uh, I'm concerned that I will lose the guy I really want to sort of run the car company part of the business, and that has to be Sergio, without a doubt. I mean, he, is, he understands all the parts of building a car, the importance of design, manufacturing, engineering, and the best part of it is he is wonderfully destabilizing to groups that are full of crust and stuff and he can keep it from setting into an organization. And I want somebody in there that's always going to be agitating the organization and he would be absolutely my first choice for sort of COO and president of the company. Oh, I thought you were going to run the company. I'm oh, chairman. you're chairman. Okay. So CEO's the exec. He right. takes care of the financial stuff. Right. This is the guy that runs the car company because it's got to be a car company. If you don't do cars, you know, so I, I would have to go with Sergio. I really think he's a great guy uh, for, for also for getting people to understand a vision. It's not just setting a vision. It's also getting them to understand and why they're part of it. You know, tough to beat. Yep, I had him on my list too. Back uh, to the war room for some perspective on round three.
Wow. All right. Okay. Now it, I'm sorry, Scott. Now it's getting to be fun. We got some engine guys coming off the board. And, and we've got a real strong endorsement of German engine technology. We've got Volkswagen and BMW, both you know, leaders in, in powertrain, both traditional and, and the new ones that are coming up. Oh, and by the way, if you notice that we've got some names in green, one of the um, markers ran out, ran dry. Uh, that's all that means. Uh, but you know, wh what are your thoughts, Scott? Well, it, it is getting very interesting. And, and obviously, powertrains plays one of the most important roles when in, uh, to get cars to move. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd like someone who does wheels too, please. <laughs> and so the development and selecting these, these people is very important. Um, it was interesting that Peter wants to combine um, the, the, that synergy that he thinks he can create with both uh, Mark Fields and Mark Royce. Um, and that'll be the Mark synergy that he's uh, building from there. Uh, and, and, and it's interesting to see that uh, uh, Ed was the first person to pick someone whose name we couldn't spell. Uh, Hats off, Ed. Well done. And uh, it, it is becoming more interesting to see who are the big leaders that keep falling on, on the board and who are the people that, that may not be taken until late in the round because right now is the time to steal one of those top executives and, and get them on your team. Uh, it looks like Bastango is set with Marchioni as, as, as at the top, and it'll be an interesting dynamic to see how well Marchioni and, and Jim Hall work together uh, <laughs> as they're developing vehicles. Well, and we've, we've got a second generation auto industry royalty in, in Mark Royce, and we've got one of the newcomers who's set the industry on fire in the last few years in Marchioni. So we, we've got a real interesting you know, mix of the old and, and the new so far. And now we're going to hear more from one of our sponsors, and we'll be back after that. Thank you. <laughs> Not only does the Chevrolet Cruze offer a ton of features, it features some of the best safety and maintenance in the business. The Cruze comes with rear park assist, which beeps if you're about to back into something. It has rollover mitigation, which means the car senses if it might roll over, and applies the brakes to the outside front tire to bring the car back under control. And it has OnStar Vehicle Diagnostics, which sends you emails about the latest status of your car. And you can learn a lot more about it at Chevrolet.com slash cruise. Let's keep it going with the choices for round number four. Back to Bistango and Jim Hall. I think I need a designer. Uh, and so I'm going to get it. I, I picked, oh, here we go. I picked the a designer is going to pick a designer. Picked a designer that I know firsthand is wonderful at challenging everybody around him, uh, that has done stuff that some people love and some people hate, and whose absence from his current company is really appreciably noticed. Christopher Edward Bangle. Chris is definitely the guy I'd want. I want somebody that's always going to be pushing stuff. Plus, this is a guy that used my own words from uh, when I was going to Arts Center against me and was right. <laughs> oh, and I was at an And what were those words? Uh, the problem is when you become the dogmatist. Which means? Uh, we were talking about design and what should lead it, and he just nailed me on something. It was the Tokyo show. We're walking around the show, and it was like, damn, you remember that. <laughs> you know, this was when it was my first term at Art Center. It was pretty scary. But Chris, I, I, you know, I, the thing is, Chris has done stuff that I really don't like. But I understand why it was done, and there was a reason for it. I don't have to like everything that gets designed anyway. Um, now, if, if it were for my favorite car and he screwed up, he'd go back and do it again. But the truth is, I would pretty much let Chris do what he thinks he needs to do for a brand because he's really good at it. Think about it. When he was there, you had the sort of relaunch of Mini with a car that worked as a Mini, the first foreign ownership of Rolls-Royce with a car that was the distillation of everything Rolls-Royce was historically, and he got BMW off of one sausage three sizes. <laughs> Interesting, interesting choice. Uh, <laughs> DeWard does appreciate good designers, but we, we appreciate designers who can do other things as well. So for our next pick, we're going to take Henrik Fisker. He can uh, design automobiles, he can design car companies, and he can design ways to suck cash from the U.S. government. <laughs> All of which are skills highly valued at DeWard Auto Group. That's right. He got a bunch of money out of the government. He did indeed. Are you going to put Al Gore on your board like Fisker did? Who? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the answer there. <laughs> well, you know, in my travels between Italy and Wisconsin and L.A. and uh, 
New Orleans and Austin, Texas. There is a man I need uh, a phone call away when I ne get to, need to get refocused. My special double secret advisor who I would trust implicitly if he said, Peter, you need to go back to Elkhart Lake and go back to work, and that would be Alan Mulally because when he's in Seattle pretty soon and at his manse out there, I know I could, I could go see the master and, and he could talk me down and get me straight and refocused on the golf course. What would he do? What's his job? What's his position? He's a special advisor ah. to, the, to the chairman, to me. Got it. To, to the boss? Yes. You know, commendatory. Yes. Well, we knew Alan was going to get picked and he was probably on all of our lists. So let's see. I've got a designer. I've got a product development guy. I've got a powertrain person. So the next step for me is I need somebody who can make my car. I need a manufacturing person. And uh, I'm going to go with somebody who's young because I need them to be with the company for a while here. I need somebody who knows how to deal with the union but also knows how to deal with the global market. So I'm going with Joe Henricks from Ford who's now running their uh, Asian operations. Now Joe might think that stepping down as uh, executive vice president or senior vice president, whatever it is at Ford, coming to run manufacturing for me is something of a demotion. But he will be rewarded handsomely for making the move. Ford Brown, and we've learned a couple of things. First. Peter is going to do all of his man management by telephone. <laughs> Apparently, everyone must call him in the middle of the night to make executive decisions. John wants to demote people but pay them more money. Um, and Ed is really looking for ways to get money out of the government. Uh, but the picks are some of the, it's, first of all, they're all people that we know. We could spell them all this time, which is a real plus. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm happy to see Chris Bangle back in. I mean, the, the auto industry is poorer for not having Chris Bangle in it. And while I've got some questions about, you know, Vintercorn being able to, you know, manage a, a million different brands, Chris Bangle has proven he can design three brands from the ground up that are completely different and completely true to what the essence of the brand is. And in his spare time, do coffee makers and stuff. I mean, Absolutely. And, and Fisker is another one that's... It's, it's compelling design, and it, it, he's somebody that's willing to take risk as, as well, and that's really something that you need in your company. Well, and as Ed pointed out, willing to take risks with other people's money, which is really a trait to be admired. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And, and Alan Mulally, I was surprised to see him fall all the way to the fourth round. Um, but now he's available by phone and, and in a different time zone to Peter, which I think is very important. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Back to the draft room. <laughs> Okay, folks, let's move on to round number five. Okay, let's see now. I've got a guy to design my car, Jujaro. I've got a product development guy in Cusack. I've got a powertrain guy in Peter Hoff Power. And uh, I've got a manufacturing guy in Joe Henricks. Now I'm going to do something different. I need to sell, market, and advertise my cars. And uh, I'd love to go with Jim Farley. I'd love to go with Joe Lewanek. But I want to do something totally different because the tagline of Dymaxion Motors is when you're ready for the future. And so I'm not even going to have my own marketing and advertising. I'm going to outsource it completely. And when I looked at what's out there, I thought maybe Whedon and Kennedy, because you know they did the imported from Detroit uh, ad with Eminem that just got four golds and one bronze at the Cannes Film Festival. But the hottest brand in the market right now from a growth standpoint is Kia. And I love them Kia hamsters. So I'm going to put. David Angelo from David and Goliath in charge of my marketing and advertising because I need to make a splash. This is a brand new brand. It's a brand new car. I got to hit the market as hard as it can go, and I'm giving it to him. Peter? Well, you know, you bring up marketing and advertising, two uh, disciplines close to my heart when I'm focused enough to even pay attention. But, um, and not in another time zone. Yes. <laughs> but I know someone who is uh, very much an enthusiast at heart and has a beautiful car collection and, and a great guy and, and one of the smartest guys 
I've ever had the pleasure to interact with. So my chief of marketing is going to be Jim Farley. And I know that when he's bored in Elkhart Lake, he can go over the track and run his Cobra. So I think he'll be happy. He'll, he'll be making about one, one hundredth of what he was making at Ford. But, you know, I think the benefits are hard to, hard to beat. So. Especially get a Renzo as a company car. Absolutely. Yeah. A Bandini. <laughs> Edward? Well, hey, I, I'm going to go with, with marketing this round as, as well, too. Um, but I'm willing to to step outside the box the way you did, John. Um, I'm going to go with someone who has worked for, for a car company before, uh, Tracy Matura. And for the guys in the war room, that's Tracy, T-R-A-C-E-Y-M-A-T-U-R-A, -E who has just been named the new head of the smart brand for uh, Mercedes-Benz USA. What I, what I really like about her is her experience uh, at Mercedes, which includes a stint as being a general counsel. She's also a lawyer, and in marketing, that can't hurt. <laughs> Interesting choice. Yeah, I have to do marketing, too. Um, and you weren't far enough out of the box, neither were you. I want Ron Johnson from J.C. Penney. Oh, that, now that's not an automotive executive. It's an executive. Yeah. Formerly from Apple. He's the guy that started the retail Apple store philosophy and understands how to interface and deal with people. That's what the business is all about. And I want somebody that doesn't come at the attitude that one of the problems with the auto industry is they confuse sales and marketing. General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler have never sold a car to an individual. They sell it to a dealer. And marketing is making a customer go to the dealer and say, I want to give you these portraits of dead presidents because I cannot resist buying the car. I want somebody that understands that part of the equation more. Get the customer and hook him. That's why Ron Johnson for me. And by the way, for the guys in the war room, that's R-O-N-J-O-H-N-S-O-N, -O -O Ron Johnson. But seriously, that, I want something that's very non-traditional. And you're gonna, it'll either pay off or we will go down in spectacularly glorious flames. I love it. There he is, the guy with the blue sweater. All right, we, we've got a run on marketing uh, in the middle rounds of, of the draft. Uh, and it, it's interesting, we've got one company, Renzo Motors, that decided to pick someone who has definitely shown that he can sell cars. <laughs> and we've got three others that thought this would be a good place to take a chance. That, that may say a lot about, about what uh, uh, people think of marketing. Uh, what, what's your take on this? Well, absolutely. It, 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 it's interesting. Uh, Matura is, is one who is, is coming over and uh, from Mercedes are going to be taking over smart car. And, and she's likely to double sales by getting them close to a thousand. <laughs> and, uh, well, and, and one thing though, I mean, you know, they, they, they were making the point that they're, they're going to have to ask people to take pay cuts in order to, you know, sell, to work for some of these startups. I mean, she would be leaving a company that is virtu a brand that is virtually doomed. So it probably won't be that hard to, to convince her to join your, your startup. It may not be that much of a pay cut either. Um, you know, one of the things that it, it, it does suggest is that um, all of these guys think that that nobody is marketing the car industry very well, or it could be done better, and that this may be a place where um, some fresh ideas uh, could, could go in. Um, you know, I, I was surprised to not see Joel Uwanek taken, because I think Joel has done some really interesting things at Hyundai. They, that whole assurance program, he played a very important role in, and that's now one of the pillars of, of the company. Well, and now that he's gone to GM, he's managed to actually define a couple of brands that had been very amorphous in, in the public eye. And, and I have to say, Ron Johnson is interesting. He, he went from Apple to a company that sells appliances, and he's going now to you know, an industry that, that thrives on convincing people that its products are not appliances. So yeah, may, maybe there's a, a sort of a fit in the, skills, in, in the skill set uh, there, uh, but I think now it's time for us to uh, listen to one of well, our sponsors it, it, again. The, the one last thing I, I'll add before we go to commercial um, is I, I really think that the, the perspective here is that all of the marketing people are kind of like the drummer on Spinal Tap. And a lot of them are just going to be replaced. And you go to the next scene and there's a different marketing person. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see if there's going to be a replacement further down in the draft or if, uh, if this is what they're sticking with. So let's go to commercial. Bridgestone is featuring its third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new technology. Current run-flat tires can offer peace of mind for consumers, but the added mass and the stiffer sidewalls can compromise ride comfort and fuel efficiency. The new third generation Bridgestone run-flat tires reduce heat and improve performance and ride comfort. 
Whether you're a program manager in the industry or just looking for a set for your personal car, check it out at BridgestoneTire.com. We've made it all the way to round six. Now let's see who makes the cut. To make sure, you know, because getting, getting employees is apparently a problem because everybody's going to have to take a haircut to work for us. <clears throat> I want a guy in a position that can make sure we've got as much money as is possible for what we're doing so we can give it to people to get the right people. And for that, there's only one choice. Lou Booth Ford. Because one, yeah. he understands how the CFO works to make sure everything gets going and goes where it needs to be. He also is good at sort of putting his discipline down through the organization so you don't spend too much for things like purchasing and procurement and so on. Seriously, he would be absolutely my choice for CFO and procurement would be a, a function vertically underneath the CFO here with no inference or no interference from other sides. He's the guy I'd want to have doing this. No, he's great. I agree with you. You know, he's like uh, behind Malali. He, he's like the replacement in case anything happens with Malali. Short term at Ford, mm -hmm. I think. But he's he's uh, he's just one of those guys. He knows it. He also he really appreciates cars. I mean, anybody that drives around in a customized Transit Connect is okay with by racing stripes. With racing stripes, <laughs> yeah. It is arguable. It probably is the fastest <laughs> Transit Connect around. And he also loves racing. So yeah, you know, which it's makes good. him good in our. And, and great, the great. CFO is an important job because that way I know that we'll have enough money to run for to make at least the 2013 Bistangos, okay? <laughs> this is our brochure, by the way, for the, the small and sports car lines. Um, it's just a draft of it. But. A draft in the draft In the draft, show. yes, exactly. Right. Now we have to hear from DeWard Motors. From DeWard Motors uh, is going to look uh, to the other side of the globe for our next pick. Uh, we need an engineering director, and we're going to we're going to promote again. We're going to take uh, someone that we think has potential and can can eventually run the engineering on it for our company. We're going to take uh, Akihiko Atsuka, who is the chief engineer for the 2010 Prius. The Prius remains the sort of blue chip example of uh, um, gasoline hybrid technology. It's the third generation, and it's uh, it's every bit as as good as it should be. No, I agree. That's a great choice. I mean, uh, no other hybrid in the world sells well with the exception of the Prius. It's knocked it out of the park. It has indeed. And for the boys in the war room, that's A-K-I-H-I-K-O-O-T-S-U-K-A. And now to Renzo Motors. Well, you know, a car company can't live by margaritas and martinis alone. Well, yes, it can. It could. <laughs> sure. Martinis, at least, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, uh, Gin uh, martinis. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Lewis Booth, but I, I do realize, and I'm sure my double secret advisor, Alan Mulally, would remind me that you do occasionally have to pay attention to the financials. So, uh, my uh, CFO will be Mr. Chris Liddell, who was recently at General Motors until he had a little disagreement with. Uh, the current chairman, so, but I, I, I think Chris would be good for, for Renzo Motors. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, I, I got somebody to design my cars, I got somebody to develop the product, I got somebody to make the powertrain, I got somebody to build the thing, I got somebody to sell and market it. I need a CEO for my company, Dymaxion Motors. And uh, Alan Mulally's been taken, John Kraftchuk's been taken, Sergio Marchionne's been taken. I'm really tempted to go with Carlos Gowen, but you know, he's making 11 million bucks a year, and I'm not sure I can afford to pay that. And besides, Dymaxion is a startup, and I need somebody that's got a real entrepreneurial spirit, somebody who's been on both the OE side and the supplier side, somebody who's been in the US and out of the market. I need somebody who's got a lot of energy and a different way of thinking of things, and I'm going with Kathy Lagaki. She is, uh, I think, one of the most dynamic people in the industry right now. She's working on this hush-hush startup project right now. They're going to do this very high fuel economy, very low cost car. Those are exactly the skills that Dymaxion Motors needs. And I'm going with Kathy to run Dymaxion Motors. Good pick. Boy, that's pretty darn good. Yep. Now they're scrambling in the war room. Mm -hmm. Wow, you know, um, I think that one of the things that uh, John wasn't aware of was Kathy is actually, that startup project is Renzo Motors. And so uh, there may be some conflict there. But the sixth round really looked like it was about money. 
um, and uh, trying to, to pay for things and run the business. Which is not a bad skill set to have w within your company, I think. I, it, it, it's nice to see that this, and, and particularly to, to, to see Lewis Booth getting uh, some credit, I he's, think. He's one of the unsung heroes at, at Ford Motor Company with everything that they'd gone through went back when they were put in the, the blue oval up for sale. Absolutely, and, and I mean, you, as you said, none of it matters if you don't make money. So I mean, I mean, Lewis, he, he is underappreciated. It's easy and it's a cheap punchline to talk about bean counters, but we've got some people here who understand finance and who can really make a difference. And and Kathy Lagaki, that's it's nice to hear that name again. And, and I can't wait to see what happens uh, from the project that she is working from if she chooses not to take Dimaxion's you know, very very generous, I'm sure, offer. It, it, it's a it's an interesting move, and uh, so there there's still a number of uh, of, of auto executives that are out there that could be taken in the next two, two rounds. Um, I'm not sure exactly what direction any, anyone's gonna go now. Uh, any ideas? Well, we, we've seen you know, all of the glaring you know, needs have been taken care of, I think, so now they're gonna be drafting for positions of need, as they say on ESPN. And, and, and usually <laughs> in the sixth and seventh, or the seventh and eighth rounds or during a fantasy draft, that's the time when you, you start looking for field goal kickers. Um, you start trying to figure out ways to skirt your bar tab is another thing that uh, you would do at this late in the round. Um, so, so this would be a good time to dine and dash is what you're saying. Yeah, I may be here for the seventh round. We'll, we'll see what happens after that. Uh, let's go back to Frank. Here comes round seven. Which of you sidelined executives out there is feeling lucky? Okay, I, I've pretty much got my management team in place here right now. But, you know, as the... Um, Supreme commander of Dimaxium Motors, even though I'm in charge of everything and get to run things as I like, it's always good to have a personal coach, somebody to look over your shoulder and see if you're doing things right. Just like in uh, a nuclear plant, you know, the guy who runs the big control room has somebody <laughs> over his shoulder, making sure they're not pushing the wrong buttons and keeping everything under control. So my special advisor is somebody who's got extensive automotive experience, both on the OE and supplier side, has worked in this country and outside of this country as well. And I'm going with Tim Luliet as my special advisor because uh, Tim's got a lot of opinions and I agree with many of them. <laughs> and so I think it's always good to have a second set of eyes on what's going on. Tim's gonna be my guy as my own personal coach and special advisor. Well, interesting. Um, you know, the uh, the Renzo Motors, the Renzo Bandini, the first car uh, that we're doing is uh, is going to be brilliant, visionary, a visionary expression of uh, everything I've ever thought about an automobile. It'll be lightweight. It'll be blistering fast. It'll be very expensive. Um, so at some point, you got to sell the thing. So. Uh, I, I need a sales guy, someone who's been there, done that, worked at, involved with Toyota, now currently at Ford, and when I can get him to focus, which might be difficult because he'll be in Florida or somewhere, but you know, since we're doing my phone comp, my uh, my car company by phone, I'm going to have Ken Zube run my sales for me at uh, Renzo Motors. He's at Ford, by the way, in case you're. <laughs> I can tell by the comments in the war room that DeWard Auto Group is going to have some some issues that we need to deal with and we need to look outside. Um, personal advisors are, are good uh, and there are all sorts of ways to be to be counseled. So I, frankly, uh, I can see we need help and for our next pick, I'm picking Jason Vines. <laughs> good pick. That's a that's a good one, right? Jason has worked a lot of places. He's worked in a lot of car companies. He has indeed. Diversified background. Yes. Yes, indeed. And uh, Auto Line After Hours regular, too. Yes. Okay, Mr. Bastango, Mr. Major Domo. You have all the cars in place, but, but how do you make sure that the next car and the car after that is going to be the kind of car you want? What are you, you going to do to make sure you have somebody that's going to stimulate your organization to do the next car better than the previous car? And for me, this is why I want to have basically a, a product innovation officer, a guy that's in charge of this for pushing technology, pushing product. And the best place to get somebody from this is from a company who sells cars that defy the laws of physics. 
All right? <laughs> that is the best way, because if you can find a guy that works Are you at talking a, about smart? No, I'm talking about really <laughs> defying the laws of physics. The, Ma- Henrik Fisker's already been picked. Yeah. Wrong. <laughs> Matthias Müller. <clears throat> Who is? Chief engineer of Porsche. Oh, great And he's choice. also on the Porsche SA board. Um, I'm serious. This is one of the guys, because if you think about it, Porsche is a company that does two things. The, it's the most schizophrenic car company on earth. They are doing vehicles that are contemporary, modern cars, in some ways as contemporary or more modern than the cars they compete against. The Panamera in spec is unlike anything it competes with. And then they do the 911, which has an engine in exactly the wrong place of where you would ever want to put an engine. But it works. And it works better every year. This is the kind of guy I want to push technology in my company. And automotive technology, so the focus is on cars. And for the guys there, it's, it's M-U with an umlaut, L-L-E-R, okay? And two T's, <laughs> Matthias. And don't forget the umlaut. That's right. But, I mean, that's what I want. I want somebody to push. Because doing the car, like Dymaxing, you've got everything in place for the first car. The second car is the hardest car to do. That's true. That's absolutely right. Good choice. All right, thank you. And we've got a couple of different trends shaping up in, in this round, I think. Uh, first of all, on this side of the board, we have the Scrabble player's delight. And, uh, <laughs> so, some combinations of letters that you get a lot of points for. A- and Dimax, uh, the Stango, we, we've got a, a vote of uh, confidence for uh, German engineering again. Oh, wh- what do you see here, Scott? Well, I, there's some, I'm not sure, I guess, uh, Jason Vines does qualify um, certainly as much as uh, Johnson does. Um, and I, I think that it's a very interesting and, it, and at least Jason has worked in the auto industry before. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For virtually everybody. Um, and and uh, I, I think that uh, Jim brings up a very interesting point where it's not selling the first car, it's selling that second car. You know, what is Renzo doing after the one-armed bandito hits the market and maybe is not quite as successful as it was hoping? Though I'm sure it will be very successful. Well, and, and you know, Renzo has got backup strength in the sales department now as well, and they have uh, pretty much crippled Ford's sales and marketing, which may be one of Renzo's uh, unstated goals. No, that's a, absolutely. Uh, it, it is interesting that Renzo is, is picking a number of uh, board people. Um, one of the things that I wouldn't do is I would never pick anybody and put them on my executive team if I couldn't pronounce their name. (laughs) And uh, I I think that that could lead to a lot of problems when staff is coming in or you're trying to send memos out. It's it's almost impossible to get an email to somebody if you can't get the name correctly. And uh, that can really lead to a lot of miscommunication. It it can be as bad as hitting reply all when you don't need to. Uh, Absolutely, and we've all done that. (laughs) Well, we've got to catch the next train out of town, (laughs) apparently, so we'll throw back to you now, Frank. All right, let's wrap up the draft with our eighth and final round. Gentlemen? You know, you can have design in place that you need and manufacturing and financial stuff, but you have to have somebody planning your future. And this is a tough one, but there's a, very, there's a, a logical reason for why I'm picking who I'm picking. Um, I, want, I want somebody who did a product that nobody in the organization wanted to do. And he pushed it in the organization and was brought in to do it and delivered the car. The car became an iconic vehicle. Um, the other thing is... This will be a guy I've always wanted to push around all the time. And it's a guy who most recently worked for Proton Holdings, uh, a guy by the name of Robert Hall, Bob Hall. Um, Your twin brother. John, please. Please, excuse me. Excuse me. My evil twin brother. Evil. I okay. forgot that. And, and the one who in my telephone is listed as spare parts. <laughs> It would be good to have him nearby so I can push him around. And also, if I want to borrow a cornea, a lung, you know, it's right there. And I'd say it's part of the deal, Bob. You want employment, this is what it costs. Uh, he's been out of the country, so you might think that's the way the U.S. works now. But seriously, I would want Bob, because Bob was the guy that started the Miata at Mazda. And it's a product that defined uh, the whole car company. And yeah, there's still probably one good car left in him. If there isn't, I'll just harvest him for skin. So major domo, minor domo? How do, you, how, how do you rate him in your company? Associate domo. No, 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 no. Because then they, there's that whole thing about him trying to jockey for position. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he can take me out and say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Jim. You know? <laughs> so he has to be in a, you know, the, the, satellite, the satellite planning office probably in Tahiti or Fiji. Okay. I like it. I like it. Yeah, you, you get Jim, you get Bob. You get Jim, you get Bob. Yeah, I like it. I wouldn't do that now, though, from a business standpoint. <laughs> DeWard Motors. Well, I, I, we've done marketing. We've got a market look at marketing, and we've we've done some of the areas that we need, and we'll certainly be looking for free agents when this is over. Hint, hint. Um, but I think uh, what we really need is we understand the retail reality in this market. Uh, you can start uh, Apple stores if you're on uh, telecommunications. It's tough to do if you're 
it's tough to do if you're a, a, an automobile company and we want to use traditional. So we're going to take a guy who, who was a star and then ran into some tough times and is now doing some consulting uh, ostensibly outside the country. Uh, we're going to take Jim Press. We think Jim can build the dealer network for us. He can find the right dealers. He can manage those relations and he can uh, move a lot of metal for us. Interesting choice. Good choice, too. Yeah, he's got massive experience in this business. And now to Renzo Motors. Well, you know, as commendatory of Renzo Motors, I think I will probably be caught in a lot of embarrassing situations <laughs> around the globe. That's so a safe bet. seeing as public relations is near and dear to the family tradition, uh, you know, I need a PR guy who, you know, talk me off the ceiling, you know, spin me when I need to be spun. But he has to be based in Paris because I have to have a reason to go to Paris <laughs> once a month. PR is always a good reason. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> this, this is a, a company, car company by phone. I will choose our, our pal Simon Sproul to uh, relocate again from Tokyo. You're going to move him out of Tokyo and send him to back Paris to Paris. Because right. I, need, I, I need him there. Because when I come in, I have to be greeted like royalty and taken to five-star restaurants. It's just appropriate. And, and Simon would know how to do yeah, that. Yeah, Simon he, would know he, how to do that. He's, he's elegant. One of the best in the business. Yeah. No question. Okay, I, um, I, I should have come to this name beforehand, before even picking my CEO, because you need to sell the product. Yeah, I, I already picked my uh, marketing and advertising. I outsourced that to David and Goliath. But, you know, when I look at who's just hot, hot, hot in sales up and down the lineup globally, but even here in the U.S. market especially, I'm going to go with somebody from Hyundai, and uh, Dave Zakowski is the guy that I'm going to go with. We got to move the metal at Dymaxion Motors, and I'm picking the guy who, in this business who I think is moving it the fastest right now, and that's where I'm going. Okay, let's go back to the war room one last time for our analysts' view of the final round. At the same time, we'll get their report cards on who had the strongest draft and who maybe not looking so strong. Guys? Okay, the draft is complete, and uh, we have a number of people that whose names we, we, we can't pronounce, and I find it very interesting <laughs> that John, who this is his home studio, made both the first pick and the very last pick. And I think that th that may take a little looking into. So you're suggesting it's not an accident the Cleveland Cavaliers got the first draft pick in the NBA? <laughs> exactly. I'm shocked. Um, well, uh, Mark, what do you think of these, uh, these final picks? Well, I, I think they're very good. And I, I, I'm concerned on one level, though. I mean, Bob Hall, there's no question that, that he is an immensely talented uh, designer. But, as we also know, he is Jim Hall's evil twin. And are we certain that it's actually Jim who is making the choices here and not Bob? I mean, for all we know, Jim could be clawing for air in the trunk of a Pontiac Bonneville at this point. <laughs> it, so, it, that's an excellent point. And but if that is Bob there, then Jim is going to be selected as Bob, so then Jim would be then the evil running person of Bistango. It, it's quite a dilemma. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Goldfinger. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was very interesting that Ed went with uh, Jim Press, who I, I actually agree with everything that he said there. Uh, he is a person that, when I have seen him in front of dealers, can get them so fired up that they run out and put $5,000 on the hood of a Chrysler and sell it. They, they adore him, there's no question. And, and I think that you know, he'd certainly be eager to get back into the industry and, and you know, show people once again why he was considered one of the smartest folks in the business before he agreed to work for Cerberus. Right, uh, well, it, you know, Cerberus was not quite the, the boss anybody was hoping for. Uh, Simon Sproul, uh, well, you know, he speaks his mind and uh, I don't know if Peter needs someone to speak his mind when he calls him uh, when Peter's up in Wisconsin or LA or Italy. Yeah. One interesting thing though, we, we have Renzo and DeWard Motors both selecting uh, public relations executives as you know some of their key people, and the other two companies didn't pick any public relations executives. Speaking as a journalist, I think this means they're doomed, because they don't have anybody <laughs> who's gonna return my calls. A absolutely, and uh, really one of the most important things at any auto industry or any auto company that you want is someone that'll return phone calls. Um, it, it's absolutely essential, especially when we're on deadline. Yeah. So what's your take on, on, on the draft as a whole? Who, who, who do you think stole the night? Um, 
if I were to, at the, the, the very first glance, I actually think Bistango may have uh, some, some of the top people in the right positions at the right time. Uh, the, the whole selection worries me, though. <laughs> I, I think you're right. There's a real strength in Bistango. They, they've got a good starting lineup and a good bench, you might say. Um, I, I think that uh, Dymaxion has got uh, some real good things going here, in spite of the fact that we had no idea how to spell uh, the gentleman that they're hiring away from Hyundai's name. Uh, but it's, it's good to see Giorgio Giugiaro get called out with the credit that he deserves for a phenomenally long and, and productive career. Uh, absolutely, and, and and I don't think that that Renzo and uh, Deward are in bad positions as well. Um, the the one thing that I, I do like about Deward is it there seems to be a, a good variety of people in there to fill in all of the different roles. Um, I think that Renzo might run into problems with the marks uh, kind of button heads together. Uh, <laughs> Ford has been on it on a great roll. I, I don't know if Ford could maintain that with. Uh, Renzo, unless uh, Peter were to really fill in as like a Bill Ford Jr. kind of person and, and, uh, and come out and really push the team. So Peter is the sort of benign overlord as opposed to the guy sipping umbrella drinks at, by the patio, by the pool bar? It's hard to say. Peter, it sounds like he does a lot of driving, so I don't think that uh, he can uh, really drink that much. Uh, so it, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, all of the teams, I think, are very good. Um, I think that it also shows a lot of insight into the industry. Uh, when, uh, when we were given a list of people, I think only half of them were actually selected. I, that may have been to make us look foolish. Well, and, and, but really, how much work does that take? <laughs> and, and this, I think, does you know, show just how strong the, the overall depth of talent in the industry is, and, and the fact that there, there are so many you know, great engineers and some brilliant marketing people you know, a, as well. Uh, because as you said, I mean, we've got a, a lists here that are full of good people, and it didn't scratch the surface of the list, of, of the overall list that we had as candidates. And, 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 and it also, you know, you have to have that, when all of these people go into the, the, the kettle, and they're trying to sell cars and make good cars, and it's a really difficult thing. The, the automobile is the second most important or second most expensive purchase that most people make in a lifetime, except for planes and yachts. Mm -hmm. And now we should probably go to the second most important group of people on the program tonight, back to the team in Autoline Draft Headquarters. You know, this was a lot of fun for me. This was totally different from anything we've done on this show. All the credit goes to Chip Drake, the producer of the show. He came up with the whole idea, bringing in Frank Marcus and uh, and Scott and Mark Phelan in, uh, in the war room and you guys here. I, I've really enjoyed this because it really got me thinking about who would I go after? And I know we've left a lot of executives on the table. and. We should do this again next year because I want to start planning this out, you know, way in advance. There are a lot of good people, <clears throat> seriously, for, for jobs that, you know, I looked at these and I said, well, who do I want? And I didn't, I, I had to list the first and second, and I realized they weren't first or second. They were, in some cases, they had three guys that could have used them all. And it was almost defensive if you picked one of them, like, okay, then I'll get one of the other guys. Well, you know, I planned it out. You know, I had multiple picks for uh, each you, one you of my positions. To, you couldn't go into this thing with only one pick, I don't think. Right, uh, because it might be taken. Right. And then what do you do? Yeah. And um, some work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, no, it is a lot of work. And Ed, you came up with a couple of names that, of people I've never even heard of before, too. And, and I like that. Now I'm going to go check out who these people are because, I mean, look, there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, and I know a lot of who they are, but I don't know everybody here. I mean, this is an industry that is filled with astonishingly intelligent, creative people. And many of those have, have, have been able to rise in spite of the fact they're in large corporate structures. And that alone is one of the most amazing things about and, it. And just converse to that, there's a lot of really good people out there that don't get any recognition exactly. at all yeah. who absolutely could step into these positions. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, uh, my team, I, I, my second team, if I did all different picks, would still be a great team. But I dare say my car company would be the most fun. Yeah, except that my company would sell more than your company. I don't have to sell as many. Because <laughs> well, because you're just driving around wherever well, you no, want to go. He said there'd be very expensive cars. <laughs> They'd be very expensive you know. cars. And, and mine would be headquartered in Santa Barbara, so I wouldn't care. <laughs> No, I'd stay here in Detroit because then you can't go away and play very easily. You stay here and you work. Well, no, I, I have to say, you know, the headquarters is in Elkhart Lake for Renzo Motors, but our southern uh, office would be in Austin, Texas. 
So when it gets when it gets like the shining in Elkhart Lake yeah. in the winter. <laughs> You're right, yeah, good idea. <laughs> we'll all be in Austin, Texas. <laughs> good in roads. Case, in case you need to find us, yeah. Yeah, and maybe a Formula One race. Maybe. 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 <laughs> right. No, but I this, think that there's the city council vote. voted yesterday yeah. to uh, Oh they did, they yeah. decided to approve it? They did indeed, yeah. yes. Oh. So I think they should move that race back to November, which is on the discussion right now. Is it really? In Formula One. And I think that would be smart because I gotta tell you, in June in Austin it's, it's gonna too be hot. It's gonna yeah. be hundred and six yeah. degrees. Yeah. And it, it, not only that, some of the, the late races fall into I mean the ones in Asia are falling into the dang rainy season. Right. Yeah, so, so they're a mess. So but if you're gonna move Austin, then you gotta move Canada too, because to make it easy no, for the No, you know, they've just yeah, they thought about that, but that it's so strong the the urge to move Austin, they might just forget it and just say, we're going to move it. Mm -hmm. I know what you're saying. They have to be in the States, you know. Yeah, they, right yeah, they try to do it. Yeah. With, they, they would try to do them in a week gap anyway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but, one week, not, not WEA. But that's not a good, uh, they need to move Austin until November. But besides, that gives them another six months to finish the damn yeah. track. Oh, you, you mean the, you may move this <laughs> this coming season? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought you meant for 25. Okay, enough F F1. I got some questions for you guys. Okay, yeah, okay. let's hear from the war room. Um. Were all of you guys looking for kind of a surprise pick in that first round? In the first round, no, I wasn't. No, in fact, I was holding back because I wanted to see where these guys were going. So, but I, I wanted to get Giugiaro right off the bat because he's the master. Maestro. But, el maestro. El maestro. And like I said, car designer of the 20th century as chosen by his peers yep. and other people in the media. But uh, no, to answer your uh, question, Scotty, you know, I, I was very curious to see where these guys were going. I had multiple entries for each one of the positions I wanted to fill. And Scott, I didn't do design because the two guys before me did design. I just wanted to do something different. So there's a lot of that. In a real pick, you'd probably be going for the guys you thought were absolutely the ones that were going to get harvested the soonest. Did, did any of you guys lose a person that you really wanted to get? Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Well, Malali's one of them, you know. Malali would be on my list. For me, hold on, it was... But not Stan enough to, be, to take him in the first three rounds, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, like I said, I, I had other, uh, another yeah. strategy in place. <laughs> oh, Royce was one that I had for another position, and he got poached real fast, so... Yeah. Yeah, I had some, but I'm not going to say because I want my draftees to know that they're number one in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, only Crapcheck is number one in, in your house. That's right. He was the first one you picked, so you know, it's always the first pick is... Right. Well, I'm, I'm curious about something. Obviously, we, we've got a very strong representation by, by the German and American auto, uh, auto industries here. We, we only had uh, one Japanese uh, executive taken. Do you think that that's because the industry, you know, there ha has you know lost some of its leadership, or, or is it simply uh, you know the fact that they they are less likely to promote the achievements of a single person, so we don't have as many people that we can focus on for the name. Mark, it's, if, the, it's oh, the latter, Mark. It it's is. absolutely the latter. We don't, we don't know when you go down the ranks in Japanese companies if they're had, they're just not exposed to us in the media. If we had more picks. There were, and, and I got to say, if, if somebody had picked Mueller for the chief innovation officer, I was going to go with Yamashita at Nissan. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing is, I had for my purchasing choices were all from whether from from Toyota and from Nissan because those guys know how to buy stuff. They really do. But we didn't get down that far. So um, I had Lewis Booth as my financial. Did guy. you? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he's a homer. Yeah. So I I think part of it is uh, you know we just don't know as many of the Japanese executives because to your point, Mark, you know. It's, they're just not presented to us in the media. We just don't know them as well. And even if you go to their websites, because I did start searching this stuff, uh, they have names of people. They don't necessarily describe what they do. I was just told that my brother says he categorizes himself as Japanese. <laughs> now, of course, that's, the, that's actually Jim who's in the trunk of the Pontiac. Okay. <laughs> You know, OnStar can find that car untold, so we're going to get right on that. It, 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 you, should be aware, you should be aware it's a 1959 Bonneville. Okay, in that case, he's doomed. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, I should have picked Bob because he and I used to be colleagues. Evil Bob, yeah, yes, that's right. Ed worked with Bob. You're kidding. Where? Why don't we? Automotive News. Okay, he, yes, did, uh, he did uh, Los Coast? Angeles for us. I did not know that. Bob was a journalist before he did the car gig. No, I knew that, yeah. but I didn't know that he had ever been at Automotive he, News. He, I thought it was at Motor Trend. He, oh, Motor Trend, Automotive News, Auto Week also, right? Yeah. He did a stint at Auto Week. He did. And then uh, to Mazda, and then Wheels in Australia. Mm -hmm. 
which is the first place Bastango ever appeared in print. <laughs> Actually, I think he immediately preceded your cousin for us in Los Angeles. Really? And then, oh. Okay. So I got a question for the war room. How, how, how do you guys like how this whole thing went? Oh, this was fun. Are you kidding? I, I'd do this again next week if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> well, not next week because I'm going to be on vacation. But we're definitely going to do this again, probably sometime next year. Yeah, so we'll have to fun. plan it I'd all like out. I'd like to thank all the crew who worked so hard at this. Yeah, because there are folks here that don't normally stay here for auto line yeah. after hours. And, and, and there were Frank, small children with his who zippy little. Uh, yeah. I mean, I got to tell you, Marcus's vest and bow tie. Frank you know, Marcus, he is styling. He's styling. Dressed exactly. To the he's eight point sixes, maybe. He's found a new calling as a. In his tuxedo with the Mickey Mouse As vest. Host, I yes. like that. That's hey, special. Hey, Sean, what temp agency did you go to to get the kids to work here to lay the cable down and stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's called Blue Sky Productions. <laughs> <laughs> Those are interns. The, the, I should a little, the I a little it, slice of Malaysia right here in Livonia. <laughs> the intern program starts really early. <laughs> right. So anyway, I, I, I want to thank everybody. You know, everybody who tuned in tonight. Peter DeLorenzo, Jim Hall, Edward Lapham, Frank Marcus, Mark Phelan, Scott Burgess. Thank you guys. And for the whole Auto Line crew here's here, who's here tonight. And uh, to wrap it all up, I'm throwing it back to Frank. Well, that's it. Thanks for joining us for the first annual Auto Line After Hours Automotive Draft. We hope you had as much fun as we did, and we'll see you next year. Auto Line After Hours is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Chevrolet, the all-new Chevrolet Cruze, get used to more. And by Hyundai, experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. That was great, guys. That was excellent. This was great. <laughs> when do you guys announce the winner? <laughs> That was great commentary. It's done. That's great. I want to work with your company. Yeah, the by phone. Phone it in for Renzo. Scotty, man, that was excellent job. Frank, excellent. This, this was fun. This was really good. You're coming by tomorrow, right? Stop the car. Uh, don't know. I will pay you handsomely with a car target. Oh, I'll bring it by. You guys were cracking us up out here. I don't know if you could hear us or not. We're also talking about picking it up in my house. Yeah, I guess. So I don't know. I'm going to have that work on the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right. And, you know, it did take a smart Well, I'll see you again at some point. Yes, you will. I've been riding. Actually, I might have it. I have it. I'm not a person here. I can give it to you now. Good Lord. Yes. I forgot what I had with me. Kathleen Lagaki was a stunning pick. Yeah, well, you know. Barb Samarjic on me. Oh, Barb would be good, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, there was a number of reasons. I wanted to get a woman in there for sure. And uh, like I said, Kathleen is working with uh, Carlos Slim and, no, 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 T. Boone, right? Yeah. It's best. In, in the startup. So I thought, you know, startup, startup, I want somebody with startup experience. You also took Derek, which was yeah. like... Oh, well, I, I knew. I heard you guys going, and I go, I'm grabbing him right now while I can. Yes. Oh, that's okay. We haven't said anything bad, have we? <laughs> I mean, I've moved my microphone. So I, I can go... Anyone from Concord at St. John contacted you about possibly getting your... My Citroen, yes. Yes, and I told them yes. Even if I gotta push it there, I'm gonna get that car there. Yeah. Is it not running well? No, no, it, it it's running. I think I need a new coil for my Citroen. But uh, I'm not sure if the coil is really the culprit. I love that concept Citroen did. Oh. In the last what was it, last eighteen months or yes. last year? Yeah. I'm, you know I'm, what? That was done in China. By their design studio there? By their yeah. it's an American running their design studio in China. Because yeah. I met the guy at the Eyes on Design at the Detroit Auto Show and he's the one who told me this was done in China. Yeah. 
but he's the guy guiding him, and he says, these guys are just full of energy. Citroen's production stuff is getting real cool, too. I mean, I love the DS3. I don't like the fact that they've purloined the DS name for cars that, but, but yeah, their cars, right. no, but their cars were designed as actually a, a big differentiator. On the DS3 and the DS4, you look at them compared to a C4 and a C3, Right, they got, but a DS should be a big car, and the DS3 is not a big well, car. No, no, but a big Citroen is a salesproof automobile now. <laughs> I mean, it is. They they, they know that the, what's the big one is a C6, which I love. It's a spectacular car, but literally it's salesproof. If there were not the Minister of Deputies, they wouldn't sell any of them. Okay. <laughs> All these little guys. It around here all the time. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it lives up in the Southfield Town Center at the, the intelligence office that PSA has. Um, mm -hmm. And the thing is, what the, the DS cars, there could be a DS6. They could do a big car that way. But they just want the DS cars to be very, very sort of in your face from a design standpoint. And it, when you see the DS4 and the DS3 side by each, you sort of go like, yeah, okay, I got it. They're pretty striking. One of the guys I had on my list that didn't, Pick was uh, Alain Joseph, who was the project director for the C3 and the DS. Oh, really? Oh. Hmm. Yeah, no, uh, you guys covered just about everybody else that I had on my list. Just about everybody else. No Chinese execs yet. No, not yet. No, they're not in the running yet. But they could be soon. They could be. And I was trying to find out, you know, you guys talk about finding the executive. I was trying to find the head of procurement for uh, Hyundai. And all I know is that the last one died in office, and when he died, they never announced his replacement. In typical <laughs> Korean business fashion, you can find out. You can find out all of the the MDs and the high end guys at the Japanese car companies by going to their home websites, in in English. And there's a thing with personnel, and in the Nissan, when you click it, and it gives you more detail for all the managing directors and the executive directors and so on. It tells what they do. Well, look, I went to Honda. I went to uh, Toyota, especially. Yeah. And there's just a bunch of names. They don't say who these guys, wh what they do at you, all. And here's what you do. You take the name from the, the home market website, right? right? And you Google take it, it. You put it in Google, and you pick the one for the Toyota press room for Toyota Motor Sales. They have their full titles in there. Hmm. That's how I figured out the guys I wanted for purchasing from both Nissan and Toyota. I had to go and get the names. Nissan has everything. They actually do. But you have to hit more info on the thing, and you don't see it normally. And then all of a sudden, their titles expand. And you're like, oh, OK. Cool. Well, we ought to do this again next year. I agree. They're coming back. I told you. <laughs> they are coming back, you sure? What are you driving, Frank? I have the 400 hybrid. Oh, yeah, that's it. the one that, that Todd yeah. came by the, the residence with. Yeah. The 400 hybrid.